off in Daniel chapter 7. We're going to talk about verses 13 and 14, um, kind of diving in there. And um, yeah, so it starts like this. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the cords of the clouds of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, one that shall never be destroyed. So this is one that has a lot of deep roots, right? So Daniel is a prophet, right? He is he is someone who we see a lot as interpreting dreams. We see him as telling the future. Mm-hmm. Um, he is someone that was a prophet of God that was very clear on certain things. And one of the people that we get the most kind of prophetic uh, images about for the Messiah Mm -hmm. and for Jesus. And so this is one of those verses. um, And so when he talks about the ancient of days, he's talking about father, right? Mm -hmm. When he talks about the son of man, he's talking about Jesus and um, he's kind of talking about what Jesus will be given. So what, what's going to be happening um, in terms of who he's going to be, right? And what that's going to look like. And so we see this all throughout like Isaiah and Daniel, um, some different places there where we see a lot of these messianic kind of verses. But um, this one's really interesting to me because we really see Jesus all throughout the Old Testament. And I think it's something that we don't talk about enough where we have all of these images, whether it's a theophany or a Christophany, where Jesus is, is literally active in the Old Testament, like doing things. You know, a lot of people believe when it when the Bible says the angel of the Lord, that that is Christ, like incarnate, there doing those things. Um, so it's not just an angel, a random messenger of God, but it's actually Jesus who is there, um, the angel of the Lord, right? Um, but in this verse, for example, we're seeing him kneeling in front of in front of the ancient of days, like coming in front of the ancient of days and he is being given dominion. He's being given glory and a kingdom. All the people and the nations and the languages will all serve him and worship him. Right. Um, his dominion is an everlasting division dominion, which will not pass away. And this is the, this is the really key point for me because a lot of people actually think that this is talking about like, um, like David, like King David. Right. Mm. So, um, like, so that people could not get confused as to who, um, as to David, right? Because, again, King David, this is obviously after King David. Um, right. But, but this is one of the key things where, um, like, other, other messianic passages get confused for David because David is the king of Israel. Mm-hmm. Like, Pilar says, um, our guy that when we go to Israel, um, her name is Pilar. She's amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, she's awesome. Uh, but when we go to Israel the last two times, we've had this guy named Pilar, and she's just amazing. Like she's, she's super smart, um, very, very wise. She's Messianic Jewish, and so she has a real understanding of kind of the Jewish side of things along with the Christian side of things and, and understanding Jesus, right? Um, and so if you, she says if you ask anybody in Israel, any Jew, who the king of Israel is, they will generally say David because he is the king of Israel, the one who was like, the best king, right? Like the highest king. Mm-hmm. Um, and so many people believe that some of these other messianic verses are talking about him, right? Because it's talking about this king that's going to come and do, do all these different things and, um, or, or is like, you know, his kingdom will do all these different things. But this verse actually shows us that it can't be David, right? Because David did die and David's kingdom did get destroyed at certain points. And so Jesus is this one that is, is the higher David, right? Uh, like we talk about Jesus being the second Adam, right? Um, this is the king of kings. That's why we say that, because he is the king above all kings, including David. Mm-hmm. He is the Lord of lords. He is higher than anybody else that has authority. And so as we, as we look at this, it's cool that we see, you know, his kingdom will never pass away. What do you think in general just about Jesus in the Old Testament and, and the prophecies that we see of him? Um, I love looking at this kind of stuff. It really excites me about looking into who Jesus is and what we thought about him before he came, you know? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that in general? I agree with you. It's the it's uh, the book of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> the book of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> is all written. It's a, it's a, what's the, what's the thing? <laughs> My memory, dude. It's the worst thing in the world. Um, 
there's a saying or something that that explains like the it's it's the the, all, the whole entire book points to Jesus basically. Yeah. Um, so I love it. I love seeing it. I love seeing even in a uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like the yeah. the other that was a, a, a the angel of the Lord. Yeah, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and just ev- all over the place, and uh, uh, Moses with the serpent, and all that. Like those are all clearly pointing to Jesus. Yeah, there's like no way around it. Like even um, you read a. For, uh, Second Samuel seven or something. First Samuel seven doesn't matter. And then I recently read First Chronicles seventeen, which went along with that same verse about uh, like uh, David was being told that his son was gonna have an everlasting yeah. kingdom, right? Like that's that that's Jesus, yeah. you know? Like I just love that. That also excites me a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, as we look at Daniel, like. <clears throat> we see this broken kingdom during that time, right? Mm-hmm. Where like, they kind of didn't really have hope like of what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> and so God giving them this hope during this time is so key as well. Um, yeah. You see that in every of the prophets like Jeremiah yeah. and, and Isaiah. I don't know if you see it as much in Isaiah. Do you? I can't tell. I don't remember. <laughs> um, but like when you read Jeremiah 29, 11, yeah. and then you keep going further that if you seek him, <coughs> um, you know, like that we have to seek his face, mm-hmm. you know, like I love that. Um, but, but there is going to be this broken time. Um, and you just have to endure. You just have to live through it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think, um, one of the things I love most about going to Israel is the Dead Sea Scrolls. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yeah. And so Dead Sea Scrolls, they're these scrolls that they found in the desert in the 40s and like one of the biggest biblical discoveries we've ever had, right? I love being part of this generation that we've seen, <laughs> we've seen so much of this evidence just being poured out and poured out and poured out from the Holy Land. And this is one of the biggest things where they have every single book of the Old Testament or at least a piece of it in possession, right? From over 2,000 years ago. Like that is crazy. Like... Yeah. Really, really impossible. Like when you think about it, I always equate this to like like the Iliad or Homer's Odyssey, right? Mm-hmm. Like um these books are newer than than the two thousand years ago. And yet we still don't have exact copies or like correct transcripts. Like a lot of them we'll find and certain things have been changed or different things are like off. Yeah. But when we look at these scriptures from two thousand years ago, it is so close. Like identical to what we have today. Yeah. So it's like how God has preserved his word is miraculous. You know what else would be miraculous is if you gave us a like or a sub or a follow on this channel, whatever you're watching on, we'd love for you to help us out and rate us five stars on the podcast platforms. If you can. Thanks. Yep. But the thing that gets me even more than all of that is that the one scroll that we have the complete perfect book of is the book of Isaiah, the great Isaiah scroll. Yeah. And this book is a book that clearly states things that happened to Jesus, that clearly states who Jesus would be and how these things would happen. And we see that from before he was born. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That to me, like, blows my mind every single time I think about it. Yeah. Because God prepared this scroll... For us now, so that we could have faith and be encouraged in what we believe, you know? I don't know, it's just so cool to me. And, and again, it goes back to just the, the simple idea of how Jesus is in the Old Testament everywhere. Yeah. That, that this is his story from Genesis to Revelation. It is all him. Yeah. And, and I think we lose sight of that so often. Like, we don't fully understand... Um, uh, for example, like I've heard this, I've heard this said plenty of times being in ministry, like for the, the prophecies that we have about Jesus, oh. just the ones that we can verify, right? Just the ones that we can, that we can know are, are that actually happened, right? Let's, let's say that, um, for those to take place, the odds of that happening at the time that it did with the people that it did and all of that. It's like, it's like filling up the state of Texas with quarters, right? 
two feet high so that everywhere in the state is just covered in quarters. Then you get in a helicopter, you're flying over the state of Texas, you take one of those quarters and you draw an X on it, and then you throw it in the state of Texas, right? Then you go and you, you, you have someone on the border of Texas and you put a blindfold on them, you throw them into Texas somewhere random, and they have to find that quarter, the first quarter they pick up is the one with the X on it. Right. That is the probability, right, yeah. of these things happening. Yeah. And yet, the world still tells us that it takes more faith to be a Christian than not. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know. To me, that doesn't really make sense. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Like, like, to me, I see these, like, 2,000-year-old plus transcripts, right? And we even have older ones than the Dead Sea Scrolls that are made from, like, silver scrolls. Like, well, what do you mean? Not every book, but we have a few uh, examples of older ones from even the Dead Sea Scrolls, and and so like we see this going back even further from silver. Yeah, they're like made out of like silver scrolls. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're really cool. Um, that sounds really cool. But um, having this understanding, right? Not only that Jesus is in these old things, right? but that we have examples of them being true, mm -hmm. that, that they are accurate, that we can trust them. Yeah. Um, like, for example, I was just watching a YouTube short of this, like, stupid podcast. I hate it so much. It's called the Whatever Podcast. You've, wow. you've seen clips Name of it, dropping. probably. Um, you've seen clips of it, probably. It's just, it's one of those things that, like, really makes me sick when I watch it, right? When it's I, when one I, of those things that you run away from. Yeah, yeah. When I see clips of it, I'm just mm -hmm. like... I am them? so glad that I'm not in this world, you know? Yeah. Why do you um, watch them? Sometimes they'll have like Christian guests on and stuff like that. I don't want to see how they navigate, you know, through, through some ah, of the stuff. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, like on this podcast, there was a, a girl who's talking to this guy who's messed up anyway, but he's like, he believes that he's a Christian, blah, blah, blah. Like kind of like one of those like super masculine, like I get to sleep whoever I want, but I'm also a Christian sort of person, you, you mean know, toxic masculine, just like a toxic person in general. Um, and he's talking to this girl and she's like, um, he's quoting her a Bible verse and she's like, but you don't understand the Bible has been translated over and over and over and over. And how can you even trust that? Blah, 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 blah. Right. This is a person who doesn't understand at all. The truth of the situation. Right. Truth of the situation is we have very accurate scriptures. Yeah. This Bible that I have right here is extremely accurate compared to over 2000 year old documents. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you just don't know. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are in that realm, but because of that, then they don't know to trust these old prophecies of Jesus that are there as well. Right. So it kind of it builds on each other, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, just for me, I think it's it's really, really important. But yeah. What was your I think you lost your point. No, that's my point, is that having Jesus, like this, this verse in Daniel, uh -huh. right, it points us to Jesus. It's not the only one that points us to Jesus. There's a lot of them in the Old Testament that point us to Jesus. Right. Okay, but how can we trust that? How can we trust that this is Jesus we're talking about, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. The reason why we can trust that it's Jesus we're talking about is because we know, we have verified from over 2,000-year-old scriptures, uh -huh. right, that these are the same. Yeah. And, and so it's not just, some, like, I didn't go back in and add this to my Bible. Right. A, a person in the in the thousands, right, they didn't go back in and add this to their scriptures. Right. We know that for a fact. Why? Because we see an older version that is clearly identified and verified, right? Mm -hmm. And so Jewish people used to say, like the scroll of Isaiah, they would say, oh, no, that was added later. Someone added that later. Uh -huh. But no, the truth is, because we have the entire book of Isaiah, we can verify that this was in the scriptures before Christ was born, yeah. before Christ was crucified, before any of this stuff happened. Yeah. There is zero chance that this could have been added. And that's why God gave us that proof, yeah. right? Because now we can have full trust and belief in the prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's beautiful. So, like, that's that's my point there. I, I just, I love it so much. I love looking into that stuff. And I'm sure we'll look at many more prophecies as we go through podcasts in the future. But really, um, some of the most amazing stuff is there for me. So, yeah. I love Daniel. He Who's might be, Daniel? He might be my favorite prophet. Is that weird? <laughs> no, that's fine. I like Daniel a lot as well. I think he's just a very good, solid, like, role model in general, right, for us to, like, look at and, and think through how he was able to, like, come through the things that he did, you yeah. know? Um, 
Yeah. Anyway. And I like the the um, interpretation of dreams. It's cool to me. So you like Joseph? Yeah, but Daniel too. Daniel does that Daniel. as well. I just like I like that like mentality. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Are you a dream interpreter? No, I wish I was. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, no, I, I wish I was for sure. That'd be really cool. Just like having knowledge that others don't, I think it's just a cool. What you know? <laughs> it's just a cool like thing to think about. Like I could be the one that helps you to understand what you're going through. That yeah. that uh, that kind of thing is cool to me. I don't know. Hey, Brandon here. If you want to check out this full episode, you can do that on patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is the best way to help us to support what we're doing here on the Better Not Easy channel. Thank you very much. So just remember that following Jesus is better not easy.